Hello, my name is Jason Miller, founder of Aspen Now Solutions, and we're about to unlock the power of ServiceNow. I'd like to start off by thanking all 2,935 subscribers in over 80 countries globally. If you believe in transferring knowledge to those who need it most, please click subscribe. Your user data will not be transferred to anyone outside of Aspen Now without your express consent. Hey everyone, uh, it's been about four, maybe five months since I posted a video and uh, got puppies, believe it or not, um, around Thanksgiving time, which is late November, and uh, just been really, really busy um, raising these guys, and um, it's going pretty well. Um, before I get started today, one thing I wanted to talk about was what's happening globally with COVID-19, and just wanted to impress upon you how important our jobs are as developers and making sure that we respond um, to this global crisis by helping out our customers as much as possible. Um, there's probably a lot of people right now that are you know, going through a lot of rough times, um, especially from the uh, employment angle too. So just be thankful that you have a job at the end of the day because um, you know, I think this crisis is really gonna have a, a huge impact um, on the global economy. And uh, one of my missions is to um, spread knowledge um, to those who, who really need it. And I, I think that in, in probably the next two years, it's really gonna be important. Um, because the secular trend of automation and reliance on technology in our lives um, is just accelerating at unprecedented pace. Um, so we'll see how that, that, that turns out. So today what I want to focus on is a recent um, reporting issue I ran into where I was trying to produce a report for a SLA report, of course. Um, to show um, success by assigned to, which was fine. I was able to um, produce a report, um, whether uh, it was like an SLA success report, and this is all just mock data, right? So I recreated it, um, which by assigned to, fine, no problem. However, I was uh, also trying to access data from a custom table and I was not able to, and thus I had to create a database view. So a database view is a view that we create that joins two tables um, and basically it brings the fields together. So we already have um, a, a natural join between task and task SLA because um, task SLA, it extends task. So if we just take a look at this report uh, quickly, we'll see here it's a multi-level pivot. And then I'm able to bring in the has breach, which is off a of task SLA. And then we'll notice here this dot walking action off the of task table. So I started with task and then I dot walk to assign to. So just to show how that's constructed here, um, I select the task and then the task fields, right? So just remember these green ones here, those are all your reference fields. So we have one for, or we have one for task at the task SLA um, level. So if we take a look here, we select it, hit this little button. And then we're able to access the fields that are there. But what happens when you create a, a custom table that extends task, um, those fields are not going to be here because parent, the parent table is task and then the child table will be your custom table. So I recreated or created another table um, called USP and SLA and it joins two tables together, the task SLA. And then also there's another table that I have in my instance called Aspen RP. And if we take a look at this, um, you know, the customer really liked the first report, but then wanted to see a breakdown by request urgency and, and, and category. So at that point, um, I had to go and create the database view. Uh, I guess another way I could have done it was I could have created a reference to that table on a task SLA table, but um, I really didn't want to go down that road. So um, one thing uh, here was that uh, with the multi-level pivot, when I configured it, we'll notice that um, one thing that's nice about that or this solution is that it combines the, the two tables together and all the selections are here so you don't really need a dot walk. One way you're gonna know that it's a database view is that you're gonna have these uh, two created repeats and then the two created by um, are also repeated too. So this is telling us here that it's created by coming off the Aspen table and then this one below 
um, is coming off the task SLA table. So then um, we can just take a look at the SLA definition real quick. It's a simple, we're tracking how fast the assignment, assigned to box gets filled in for when it's active. Um, stop condition is assigned to is not empty. So as soon as that happens, then guess what? The SLA um, is either breached or uh, um, it's not breached. So this is uh, the original table here. Uh, Aspen RP that I created and we're we have some data in here um, but the the main three columns to focus on were the category the assigned to and the request urgency and now we'll take a look at the SLA table um, and this is a combination so you'll see here the two creators that I mentioned before um, and also uh, three categories here. And, and just one note on this is that we're not entering any data here. This is just kind of like an output um, or visualization of the data. So how do we create the database view? Well, we're gonna get started right now. And you know what, I'm just gonna move this toolbar to the bottom. And I'm doing my recording in Zoom today because for some reason my QuickTime player doesn't wanna allow me to share a screen anymore. So uh, here's our database view table. Um, you have to be an admin to access it. So I just typed in SE space view. Database views comes up under system definition. And then here's the one that I created. When you click new, it's gonna take you into a screen like this. So you can give it a name, a label, uh, plurals, whatever. Um, and if we take a look at what I had created. So here's the name of the table. I put in the label there, and then you're gonna have this related list come in below, you know, basically asking you which two tables do you wanna to put together, right, or join together. So the first one is task SLA, and one important thing is gonna be your variable prefix. So here you're gonna see task SLA table. Um, we can do field, specific fields if we want to, However, I didn't want to go that route um, because then I'm going to have to put in a bunch of fields. I, I really didn't want to waste time with that. I just want to bring in um, all of them. And then the next part is we're going to have to create one for our custom table, which in this case is Aspen RP. And then notice here the variable prefix, AASP. Now we need to have a where clause. So you know those of you who do a lot of scripting or especially with the business rules you're going to notice this construct here and that instead of like the um the dots like if we're dot walking we have these underscores so task sla dot task and what that's saying is we're on the if you're on the task sla table here's our task column so right now it's re referring to this one but we'll notice here that this is a reference field so it is referencing that that um, the task table, right? And saying, okay, which task do you want? Um, and then here we're saying AASP, which is our variable prefix here, dot sys ID, but they're using an underscore. So this would be the formula that we'd use. And again, for those of you who do business rules, you probably understand why we need the sys ID. The reason why is because this is a reference field, right? It's a re reference to the task. So we need to have that sys ID in there. If we don't have that, um, my guess is it's not gonna work. We wanna take a look at an example that's out of the box. Um, this SC task SLA um, is a good one to use. There's also incident SLA. Um, so you can use those strictly for, for reporting. So that way your customers don't have to really get bogged down with remembering the dot walk. Um, because a lot of times, um, especially going back to like there being multiple um, creatives, right? You will have to explain that to them, like which creator is which, however it is underlined or basically outlined in the parentheses there. So if we go back here to our, our report, um, when we select our rows, um, we'll see here, these two are coming from the, um, the, the custom table. Now, if I wanna put in assign two, I can also do that. Um, and I don't know what that's gonna render like, but we'll hit run. And then we'll see here, we have our urgency, our category, and our assigned to. We could also rearrange it if we wanted to um, also. And just a reminder, with a report like this multi-level pivot, it is clickable. So if we hit, I don't know, we wanted to see you know, which ones are the empty records here. We click on these eight and it would bring us here um, into this list view. So that's our solution for today. My name is Jason Miller.
founder of Aspen Now Solutions, and we just unlock the power of ServiceNow. Thank you.